Go straight to alterations today. I know I want something fitted, sexy, classic, modern. I'm just old school like that. I just. That's why you stuck me in that horrible dress. What did your bride say? Wow. Do you like it? Number seven, Bridezilla. 24-year-old Emily Bleakley from Georgia is feeling lonely, sitting in the middle of a gaggle of friends who are going to be her bridesmaids. The issue at hand is Emily's insistence on her bridesmaids wearing yellow dresses to the ceremony and it's creating a lot of ripples in the placid pond. She's facing stellar opposition from a couple of her bridesmaids who consider it a travesty of fashion to be relegated to wearing yellow to a wedding. Um, I definitely want yellow. Everybody okay with the yellow? I don't want to like Big Bird up there. They are very, very against the yellow dresses that I want. You're dead set on yellow. Because I don't feel like my bridesmaids support me. I just hold everything in, but it really does bother me. The issue has divided the group, with Emily on one side and the bridesmaids on the other. There is trouble brewing in paradise, and it has everything to do with the bride's choice once again. Consultant Brandon is caught somewhere in the middle, stuck with an impossible task of helping both sides of the divide reach an agreement. In the middle of this, Emily is not helping things with her catty observations on the dress worn by the first bridesmaids to come out for a showing. As each bride comes out of the changing room, she is treated to the added insult of the bride passing derogatory remarks on the dress she's wearing after being forced into wearing a yellow dress in the first place. I love this dress. Like, I want this. <laughs> okay, out of all the colors, I like that one the best, for sure. Lemon. I just hate that dress. I like the material of it. I'm really just worried about what Laura's thinking. All the bride is doing is being nasty. It's like word vomit. It just came out, and I couldn't control it. Looks good for- To deal with a nasty bride, but I just need to focus on getting these girls in a dress that will come in this lemon yellow. It's settled. The bridezilla not only is missing tongue control, but she is enjoying the spectacle of this dress hunting going down the drain and getting a perverse sort of pleasure out of it. Even as Brandon has abandoned the useless exercise of putting these bridesmaids into yellow dresses and giving Emily a wide range of colors to choose from, she is unable to keep the catty remarks from popping out of her mouth and it has sourced the entire atmosphere of the meet. It's time to bring in the big guns and Brandon has gone snitching on Emily to Lori with the hope that she would be able to smooth things out. A mother herself, Lori knows that there are deeper things at work here. She comes out directly to the bride-to-be and asks her where her mom is. She has opened up a can of worms Emily was dealing with on her own and it has everything to do with her feelings of sadness and disappointment towards her mom but she has been taking out on all these poor girls. This counseling session is exactly what Emily needed and once again the meeting is continuing but this time with spectacular results. Number 6. Mother and Daughter Team Kleinfeld is in a dicey situation with a capacity to go in any direction. Bride-to-be Courtney Connor has rolled into town in search of her bridal dress and she is coming to Kleinfeld with her parents in tow. The only caveat in this situation is the fact that her father, Chris Connor, is bringing along her stepmother to be for her own bridal dress choosing as Courtney chooses her dress. This situation could go south, but not today since it will be handled by an expert like Christiane. Both brides-to-be are taken to separate changing rooms and Courtney is the first one to be brought out for a viewing. Nice yeah. to meet you. My name is Courtney Connor. I am 27. I'm from Boise, Idaho. My future stepdaughter. I brought uh, today Rita's sister, Lisa. I have one of my brides. I'm doing a winter wedding, February okay. 16th. I definitely want something okay. fitted. Um, okay. I like lace. On a beach in Hawaii, it would, it would be work. perfect to be barefoot. So. Okay. Come on with us. I'm excited. Woohoo! Beyond excited to get to spend the rest of my life with him. Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna start my shopping. Okay, okay. perfect. The dress is a creation of lace and silk with a plunging neckline and a plunging back attached to an elegantly draped A-line skirt. Though Courtney is completely taken with the dress, she's disappointed by the rejection it's gotten from daddy. As she is coping with her feelings of rejection, stepmom-to-be has come out of the dressing room for a showing. Wearing a spectacular gown rouged out in layers, starting from the neckline going down through the bodice until reaching the hips and flaring out into a gentle skirt. The dress does absolute justice to her figure and it's extremely well received by daddy, a point very well noted by Courtney who is struggling. 
Team Kleinfeld knows the no bride wants to fight for the affections and acceptance of her father with her future mother-in-law and it's time to take the situation in hand to make sure that she doesn't break her heart in the process. This time the dress they choose is one of a kind which is an all-time favorite. A lazy affair from head to toe, it starts with a sweetheart neckline running over Courtney's curves before falling into a gentle A-line to the floor. A sash is running over Courtney's trim waist with the perfect amount of sparkly embellishments the dress needs. Think. You need something else, more lively. I'm definitely let down for the sheer fact that I did initially put it on and think that... Hi! Oh, hi. Wow. wow! Oh my god. Oh, you look very pretty. Whether he's clueless about wedding dresses or his daughter's feelings. The uh, most important thing to focus on was you really want your bridal appointment to be your bridal appointment, not a competition. Courtney feels like a million bucks in it. Does it make daddy's heart go pitter-patter though? Choice words coming out of dad's mouth have broken Courtney's heart. Dad's mouth is a runaway train and Courtney is paying the price. By this time, the entire wedding party is aware that they might have a meltdown on their hands and it's time to take a step back. While stepmom-to-be is cool and confident in whichever dress she's putting on, Courtney is battling her nerves at every turn before finally finding her steel spine and marching out to her entourage in the one dress which has made its way into her heart. Dress number two is the one she liked best and dress number two is the one she'll be taking home today. Bravo, Courtney! Number five, Mama Knows Best. Stacy Ballard is 39 and she has traveled all the way from Atlanta, Georgia to find her wedding dress at Kleinfeld. Accompanying her on her mission are her mother, Terry, and her best friends, Emma and Daniel. Stacy is the regular tomboy grown into a beautiful woman and she is definitely rock chick vibe going. She has remained true to her indie chick persona by not wearing even a single dress in the last two decades of her life. Are you gonna remember? Do you have any ideas of what you want? Yes, Mom? I want lace. She wears t-shirts and blue jeans, and I'm like, dress feminine, she doesn't. I've worn a dress like once in the past. Foot tall and kind of curvy. She is really curvy. She just call me fat again? Yeah. See? Yes. Okay, we can do sexy lace, Mom. What do you want to spend on your dress? Unconditional love is the foundation of every mother and daughter relationship. What the? If it were up to her, she would be strutting a pair of leather pants down the church aisle instead of a wedding gown. It's obvious the mom, Terry, and Stacy do not see eye to eye on their fashion sense, and the barge of two way silos being thrown by both sides into each other is a dead giveaway that this is going to be a happening dress hunt. By her own admission, Stacy is a larger than life woman with a personality to match. Standing at six feet tall with a booty and a rack to match, Stacy is willing to come out with a bang on her wedding and what she wants is something sleek and slinky. Randy and Debbie are about to make her witches come true, but first they're gonna give her a taste of all the good stuff they've got lying around in the boutique. They're about to start this show with a first dress on display. It promises happiness with a rouge sweetheart neckline ending in a beautiful embellished trip running through the waist, but that is where the dream ends. The skirt is a nightmare of voluminous folds which gives a widening effect to Stacy's generous hip, making it look as if she's wearing a tent. The entire party is definitely not happy with the dress and what Stacy wants is a form-fitting dress which will distract from her width instead of pulling attention to it. It was absolutely gorgeous. Do you have lace on? Yes, Monty, I have <laughs> lace on. I didn't really think I would like strapless because she is so busty. It's got lace. Your mama's it's, crying. It's holding you up. And Where your you mama's crying. Out? And you don't like to shop. So, where do we go? I'm thinking we should try this on. I think it's great. The fit. And that is exactly what dress number two does, apart from a lot of other things as well. It's a beautiful mermaid cut dress made of ivory silk worked over with intricate needlework. Sporting the right amount of silver sparkle, it has most definitely put a sparkle in Stacy's eye and restored her faith in Monty and Lori. What it has done to Mama is it has brought her tears to her eyes. Stacy is in love, but she wants to try out more dresses before she sets her finger on the one, so it's back to the changing room once again. 
This time, she has come out in the perfect combination of understated elegance and va va boom brilliance. The mermaid cut dress has put Stacy's beautiful curves on flattering display, and this time, though the tears are not coming to Mama's eyes, they are definitely sparkling in Stacy's. It's obvious this bride has finally found the special dress she's been looking for high and low and she's gonna take this one home with her. The only one standing in her way is Mama, whose heart is set on dress number two. So is Stacy going to give in to Mama's blackmail or will she listen to only her own heart? It looks like there's no need to wonder since the veil accompanying the dress has done its job and converted Mama into a believer. Number 4. Role Reversal Bride-to-be Mackenzie is getting married with the majestic Smoky Mountains as the panoramic view which will be companion to their exchange of nuptials. All she needs is a dress majestic and beautiful enough to match the mountains, but that's easier said than done. Hello. Nice to meet you. How are you doing? Good, we're very excited. Who do you have with you? This is my mom. What the heck have you been doing? I had a dress made actually for me. I had two wedding. Not Mackenzie. I feel kind of guilty for like wanting a different dress because I had this made for me. This is just for the dress. I feel guilty for even like dress shopping. So I think like two grand max. You see, this wedding is just two and a half weeks away and Mackenzie has found herself in the hair-raising nightmare of ending up without a bridal gown so close to her D-Day. No, she didn't forget it. She had made a risky decision which had failed to produce good results and now she's dealing with its consequences. She had been greedy of wanting the best of both worlds by asking for a custom job of combining two vintage dresses from both sides of her family into one and the results had been horrendous. Now, Mackenzie is in the doubtful position of having to run from pillar to post looking for the dress which would come up to par in her wedding. She has finally reached the right place because Kleinfeld is the best answer to her prayers. This bride is truly a novelty as it doesn't happen every day that the bride isn't concerned about the price tag and the dad is willing to write a blank check, which is what we see happening over here. As long as his daughter is happy, daddy doesn't have any qualms about taking out his checkbook and writing a bigger check. Once again, this bride wants the best of both worlds. She wants something timeless, but at the same time, it should have a modern twist to it. It needs to be simple and elegant, but at the same time, it needs a little bit of sparkle to carry it. The twinkle in Lori's eye is a dead giveaway that she has big plans for Mackenzie and in no time she has her fitted out in the first gown which is an elegant Kenneth Poole creation. The ivory silk charmiest fabric has been inlaid with intricate lace covering the cleavage carried by white on white needlework motif throughout the middle of the waist. Feel it. She knows she looks good in that dress. We can go home. You think we're done, Dad? Yeah, I think we're, yeah done. we're done. It's not too bad at all five grand. That's as much as my car. And felt really it's silk and it's couture. And it's just awesome. I'm a little disappointed that she's that concerned. Try on a couple more. We got a role reversal going on here today. Usually it's the bride. That A-line cut of the gown gives it more of a romantic than a dramatic look before falling in a gentle wave to the ground and ending in a long train at the back. The gown has had a profound effect on Mackenzie as soon as she put it on and she cannot resist doing a little shimmy in it. The excitement in her stride is a dead giveaway of how happy it has made her feel and the light as air silk train billowing behind is indicative of the freedom of movement it has given her. What's more, her family's just as taken with it as she is. But as soon as the price tag is mentioned, the happiness and excitement simply leaves her face like it was never there. The $5,000 price tag has most definitely sent her floating spirit sinking to her very ankles, even though daddy is completely upbeat and happy about footing the bill. It's an epic role reversal with the bride pulling the brakes on this runaway car with daddy sitting in the driveway seat with his foot firmly pressed on the acceleration. Even though Mackenzie has marched back resolutely to the changing room intent on looking for a gown within her means, Dad is still hoping that she would change her mind and he has a point. Dress after dress have done nothing but failed to compare to dress number one. Confused and disappointed, Mackenzie is down to dress number four with no hits. It's time to bring in the expertise that Lori has and she gets down to work Mackenzie over and bulldozing her barriers. Without wasting any more precious time, which Mackenzie is already short on, Lori has her dressed up in dress number one once again and marching out to her family. 
The little talking that Mackenzie gets from Lori is all based on common sense and it gets the job done. Number 3. An Elopement Lauren Walker just returned from eloping in Italy and it's time to make things right with her family at the reception. She needs a glamorized party dress come wedding reception done to tide her over and Antonella is going to be her point woman on it. Welcome to my nice to meet you. I'm looking for a sexy kind of party dress for my reception. Today I brought Mom's opinion the most. I'd like to ultimately make her happy considering that I just eloped in Italy. <laughs> Price point. I don't have a budget. I mean, I'm not one to spend 50000 on a dress, but if I... We are ready for you! Yay! Hello, oh, beautiful. How are you? How are you? I'm Randy. I'm Lauren. And guess who's joining her hunt? The minute Randy hears that there's a beautiful woman looking for a bridal dress without any budgetary constraints, he gets himself counted in on the consultation panel. Well, what do you know, this bride wants skanky, and without wasting any time, Randy has her dressed up in a skin-bearing show-all number. With a see-through corset atop, this is just one step from being called lingerie. Its only relief is the seductively draped skirt attached to the top. The bride might be loving it, but all it's gotten from the bride's mother is that it has raised her hackles. Dress number two is another panina torne, and it's perfectly suited for a wedding reception. A combination of silver and beige silk, the bodice is a gently draped work of art made up of beautiful needlework running from the neckline down to the hips. The Bacchus gown is a statement art piece, but once again, Mama is not impressed with the amount of skin showing. How do you feel? I love this one. Watch it. Beating, all of it. It's beautiful. Should we see what the entourage thinks? We should. Okay. Let's see what they think. Front, I don't love it in the back. I don't. So you don't love it? <laughs> How about from the side? Not sexy. I, the sexy, I, I don't like so much. Okay. Right now, I feel discouraged. I feel like she is not going to like anything I try on. Dress number three is a truly beautiful bridal dress with a sweetheart neckline held up by lacy shoulder straps and a full skirt complementing the skin-tight bodice. Though it's a little bit more to mom's liking, it still hasn't made the cut. So it's back to the changing room once again and this time, it's the bridal party and not the bride who will be choosing the next dress she will be wearing. And what a choice they've made! The next gown is a refreshingly off-color, drop-dead gorgeous glam piece reminiscent of old-school Hollywood. It's almost a definite hit with the bride, but for mom, it's missing the quintessential bride look what she wants for her daughter. It seems that the two are working at cross-purpose as the bride is most definitely looking for a party piece, but mom is looking for a bridal dress since she missed out on the chance of seeing her daughter as a bride. Well, there has been a compromise brokered by Randy who has reached the conclusion that mom is so sad about having missed her daughter's nuptials that she's not finding happiness with any of the dresses she's putting on. Compromise reached and the situation is smoothed over with a dress the bride comes out wearing and mom is completely on board with her daughter's latest choice. Number 2. A youthful part of the group Haley Fonderberg is 25 years old and has traveled from Alabama with her mom Candy, stepmom Christy, and Kim and her cousins, making up the youthful part of the group. Right off the bat, mom Candy has made it clear that it's going to be a budget wedding, putting a very short cap on the finances. Her opinion matters because she's the one who will be spending money on the wedding dress. Now, just because you're having a budget wedding doesn't mean that you have to compromise on style, which is exactly what Haley doesn't want to. But if mom can't yet anything to say about it, Haley would be wearing a paper bag to her wedding if it's not something to Candy's taste. Dress number one is a beautiful silk piece with lacy shoulder straps, a sweetheart neckline, and a full skirt. Beautiful though it might be, it's not getting anyone's hopes up except for Haley's. And what they find for her has clearly left her stumped. Class meet a vintage hippie wedding, and this is what you would end up with. It's not my idea of what hippie we're looking yeah, for. Need something to accentuate it, I guess, but not show it all off at the same time. Is what you have on what you wanted? I'm looking for something more sheer. It's a, a $324. That is half price. We're not getting a dress just because it's half price. Yes, we are. <laughs> <sighs> 
Mom just cares about finding a bargain and she is killing our bridal bud. The dress is a classic Georgian cut such at the waist before flowing to a beautiful skirt. What brings the entire look together is the classic hippie twist on the veil. And surprisingly, it's got mom tearing up as well. Those tears of joy have soon turned to cheers of elations as soon as Candy hears the $1,800 price tag attached to the dress. Hallelujah, Christmas has arrived before December. Number 1. Running Late Ebony Stanback is from Brooklyn, New York, and she has brought along her mom, Michelle, and her best buddies, Tarsha and Jocelyna, for a wedding dress hunt. Debbie is the lucky consultant who will be guiding her through the difficult process of dress hunting. With the wedding just four and a half months away, Ebony has just woken up to the fact that she is extremely far behind her bridal dress hunting and needs to get a move on or else she will be moving down the aisle in her business suit. A ticking. So I need to find a dress immediately. Today, Our budget is about $3,500. Okay. Are you ready to try on? Yes. Okay. Hello. Hi, beautiful. Hi, How are you? Thank you so much. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. You laced. This is like a really lucky find. Oh my God, Debbie, wow. you're a lifesaver. As always, easier said than done. Finding a dress to suit your body type and match your taste is a gargantuan task. But when you leave it for the last minute, it's bound to leave you with extremely limited choices. When you're big and beautiful, your choice is curtailed even further. Throw in a short deadline, you end up with a crisis on hand which Ebony is experiencing currently. With her deadline dream being just four and a half months away, anything Ebony chooses has to come off the racks and accompany her home which means that her choice for a wedding dress is extremely limited. Nevertheless, the stellar team servicing Ebony is designed to deal with crisis mode and in no time, they have her kitted out in the first choice available. For a last-minute choice, it's not too bad an option. The bodice is tightly fitted just the way Ebony had wanted. Starting with a sweetheart neckline, beautifully worked embellishments with just the right amount of sparkles descending to mid-thigh level. But I think I'm gonna see what everybody else thinks. What do we think? Uh, hey, you know what? Like I'm not crazy about the ruffles. Wah, wah. And I think it needs to be a little high. Bling that you like. Mm -hmm. That is true but I hate it. Okay, so this has the... And that dress is stiff. It looks like a palm dress. I'm extremely nervous, and I have no idea what we... When to get a dress. This is it. I don't know if I can get in, in on time. It then flares out in a ruffled skirt, which falls to the floor, ending at the back in a tapered train. Ebony has fallen in love with a beautiful creation, but is she finding agreement from her entourage? Unfortunately, she is getting mixed signals from her group of buddies which are converging on only one point. They hate it. So once again, a disappointed Ebony is seen dragging her feet back to the changing room. Will Randy and Debbie be able to find something to make Ebony's heart go into overdrive or will this bride have to sacrifice her dreams and show up to her own wedding in a compromise? Not with Randy and Debbie on the watch, she won't. Randy is about to pull out another hero act before he shows the beautiful, glamorous piece he knows will look stunning on Ebony's voluptuous figure. He gets his fact right from the manager of the sales department. We won't want a bride to be with her heart completely broken at Kleinfeld and before a piece is shown to the bride, a stylist must know that it can make available for her wedding. It seems Ebony's luck has finally turned and this dress can be made available within a three-month deadline. It's time to show Ebony the dress and as calculated, she has fallen completely in love with the structured art piece. Starting in a sweetheart neckline, the dress is made up of ivory silk pushed up into asymmetrical lines running through the entire bodice before falling out to a ruched skirt ending in a train at the back. The dress has definitely been received with as much aplomb as it was presented with and it has most definitely found a home in Ebony's heart. Even Mama Michelle cannot stop herself from shedding tears, but will the dress be available to Ebony to wear on her wedding day? The tears falling from Ebony's eyes have brought their magic and sales can do nothing but to oblige this bride who has come to them crawling on her knees. Love. <laughs> That's the one. That That's the one. beautiful. Yes. Oh, that looks like it. Of why you should never wait till last minute to shop for a dress. That means she waited three years to shop for a wedding dress. Now you wanted to pull out a dress in three months? Of course.
dress. Yes! <laughs> what a relief we can get the dress for Ebony in time for the wedding. So, Ebony, are we set? Thank you so much, Debbie. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, so well. That's all we have for you folks. Join us next time.